Nerds, I was recently commissioned by a lady at work to create a piece of jewellery that really reflected her love of cats. Um, she's a self-confessed crazy cat lady, which I think is fabulous. Um, and she has two uh, cats that she loves. So we talked about different types of jewellery that I could create for her that um, captured that for, for her and uh, ended up deciding on a ring. Um, I mentioned that I create, I've created a few rings from precious metal clay. So uh, we had a look at different designs and uh, she quite liked one that had two cats, um, sort of one on either side of the ring. Uh, they were, the, what, the design we saw originally had a um, ball, sort of like a ball of wool I suppose. It didn't look exactly like a ball of wool, um, but I think that's that's what it represented but I said instead of that how about I put a heart in the middle so that it's um, so I thought that might be a bit more special um, to show the love of her cats um, so I was relatively happy with the outcome of the design um, it did shrink more than I anticipated though and I think that's because I was um, torch firing what really should have been a kiln fired ring um, it was a very thick design and if I was doing it again I would um, create a ring that was much thinner or I would make sure that my kiln was ready and set up before I attempted another thick ring like that again. Um, so uh, I think the design it made it go a little bit elliptical um, and I think that's just due to where the cats were and the shrinkage that happened sort of on either side of the ring. It's really quite difficult to evenly torch fire a ring. Um, so I guess I would say if you look if you're watching this tutorial and thinking of attempting a ring like this, um, take that in uh, you know into mind when you know you're, you're creating your own ring that you either create one that is um, thinner. Um, some people say maybe six cards. I think you could probably go up to eight cards or so if you're torch firing. Um, and uh, if you were going any thicker than that, then consider kiln firing um, or take it to someone who has a kiln that can fire that for you. Um, the other thing that I noticed was the cubic zirconia in the design uh, seemed to go a little cloudy, but I thought it still looked good. Um, I'm not sure whether that was to do with the way it was fired as well. Um, so. You know, it, I think I can definitely improve on uh, my designs, but I thought I'll share this with you guys anyway, um, and hopefully you can gain some inspiration uh, for creating your own PMC ring. So let's get into it. It's important to use some oil first before doing PMC, just a very, very light coating rubbed on the surfaces uh, to stop the clay from sticking to things. With PMC, measurement is done usually with um, playing cards and it's a thickness of playing cards that you use. Um, you'll see that referenced in tutorials and things that a card thickness rather than a millimetre thickness and um, basically you sit them on either side of your clay so that when you roll it you know that it's exactly that thickness. I'm using six cards, I want the ring to be nice and um, sturdy. So now I'm just trying to get it to the right length. Um, with rings, generally PM, with PMC rings, um, it should be two sizes larger than the size of the final product. Uh, that can vary though, so uh, sometimes it is a trial and error um, thing. You start to learn more about the clay as you go along.
just cutting it to a strip. Uh, I want um, a fair strip of ring because I'm going to be uh, putting the cat design on top of this ring. Now I'm cutting at an angle here. That just helps to add some strength uh, where the join is instead of it being a straight join. Just having that angled join uh, means that you know it, it does add a bit more strength. Um, of course I am, as you can see, I am joining those two ends but it is um, a good little technique that I was taught. I'm just using the cards here to really straighten that ring on my ring mandrel here. You can see underneath the ring as well, I have a piece of sticky tape and that just again helps uh, stop the ring from sticking too much. That shiny surface of the sticky tape um, is enough to stop it really sticking too, too much to the um, mandrel. So I'm drying the ring off with my heat gun there. You don't have to use a heat gun, but it does help to have something to dry the ring as you go along maybe a hair dryer or something like that. I'm being very careful when I remove this ring. So I want a nice flat edge so I am using these little sanding blocks uh, I got these, I think it was from Fire Mountain Gems, and they're just great little sanders for PMC and things like that. Um, I have a, about six, I think, in different grit sizes, so a rough down to a smoother um, grit, depending on what I need. This is a great little pen as well. So this is... Um, a paintbrush pen with water inside it. As you squeeze it, the water comes out and um, it just, it's really easy to use that to sort of smooth things out with the clay. Now I just want to soften those edges so that they're not, um, so they're a bit rounded. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to hit record um, when I set that uh, cubic zirconia in there. So, um, basically, I just used a, um, a sharp tool to sort of drill a little bit of a hole into the top of the ring um, and set it in a little bit into the ring. Um, so this is the tool I'm showing you here. And um, as you can see, I sort of twirl it to sort of show basically how I created a little divot for it to sit in. And then you use your syringe tool to pipe a setting about the size of the cubic zirconia and then you press the cubic zirconia into it. Now I've got a PMC slip paste um, and that's perfect just for smoothing out edges and things like that so um, and helping to stick things um, you know two bits of clay together and any of my leftover clay little bits I put into the slip with a little bit of water and that keeps it um, usable and I just keep topping up the water or the clay uh, as I need to. Now I'm trying to press uh, little ears into my little cat faces. So these um, balls that I've just added, I wet each bit of clay and then pressed them on. And now I'm using my wax carving tools to um, put indentations in the shape of ears there. It's very small, so you just basically need to put the impressions, the major aspects of a cat's face on there to give the impression of it being a cat. It was quite challenging this part. So 
So I'm using a pin there just to sort of the rounded edge of the pin. You can be really creative with what you use. You can basically sculpt with whatever you like. Um, it's just a matter of getting the right shape of thing. You could use a skewer, a paddle pop stick, whatever it is that you need to create the shape that you want. Speaking of sizing, I found in the end that this uh, ring did shrink more than it, um, more than I wanted it to. So it wasn't uh, the outcome I'd hoped for, but I'll still share this all with you anyway. And um, I did give the lady a discount because um, because of that. So now I'm pressing the bodies of the cat. Um, I'm putting a bit of the slip again onto the ring. That just helps it adhere. And I've just um, rolled out a little bit of clay into a basic cat body shape, which I'll then obviously need to sculpt and things once it's um, attached. So you can see there I've sculpted that down a bit and um, put some indentations in for legs. I haven't yet got the front legs. Those I'll be adding on to the design a little bit later. So a paintbrush is a fantastic tool as well for um, using PMC, either with water or with the slip. And um, I'm using the slip there to really create a nice join between the cat's body and the ring so that it's really smooth, it's really in, uh, integrated into the ring. Now you can see how thick this ring is and um, I actually do torch fire this but I would be honest to say if I was doing it again I don't think I would make it this thick if I was torch firing. Realistically you want to stick to about six cards thickness uh, when torch firing and I was a little concerned about how this would fire. Um, it did fire fine. I really went overboard with the firing um, but I feel like uh, that might have been a bit of an issue with um, basically once it was fired it did go a little um, elliptical and I think that was because of the thickness of the cat's bodies basically pressing the the ring and um, also I guess the fact that it's really hard to evenly fire something with a torch whereas Using a kiln really gives an even firing and uh, is much better for any thicker clay projects like this one. But if you have a kiln then you can certainly um, do a project like this. Or if you don't have a kiln and you are torch frying like myself, I would probably say make the cat's bodies and the cat's heads just really quite flat and um, not as prominent or 3D as I've made them there. So you can see it's really just a process of um, continuing to define and um, fix the details and add the details. Uh, so I, you know using a mixture of sanding, um, continuing to sort of carve the dry as the clay dries I'm carving the clay away to smooth it I'll come in with the paintbrush again to smooth that down and just I just keep working away at it slowly 
but surely to get the right design. You don't want to rush it. Uh, the ring at this stage is still is really quite fragile, um, so you do need to be very careful and try not to let that ring crack. If by chance it does break or crack, you can fix it. You just need to be really careful. You can um, use your slip again and uh, wet the ends and refuse the clay again together that way. Um, but you know, look, if you can avoid that happening, then it's much better. That little sander I've got there is fantastic as well. I got that also from Fire Mountain Gems. Uh, they're just almost like toothpick size sanders and they have different grit sizes um, on the just tip of the sander. And it's perfect for PMC where you really need to get into fine detail to sand it. Uh, so I highly recommend those for anyone who's doing PMC. Just really fixing all of the details of the face uh, as I said you can um, keep working at it to get that right shape um, I'm also just here I used the syringe to add um, a bit more clay around the heart to really get the uh, clear heart shape and um, now I'm just smoothing that out because it's a, it's quite difficult to get it perfect with just the syringe. So using some water and a brush uh, helps you move it into place. See, I've got a quite a good um, heart definition now around that cubic zirconia. I'm wetting it down there so that I can add the cat's arms um, and I take it off a couple of times just to roll it out a bit more and thin out the arm so it's not too thick but of course I can adjust that as well once it dries um, and that's what I end up doing as well. So I basically want the cats to look like they're both holding the heart and I want to keep it relatively symmetrical. Um, now I'm just you know carving away some of the clay to really define those arms a bit better. It is actually dry now, I've dried it 
uh, and that does make it a lot easier to carve some of the clay away without taking the whole um, arm off and it's a really good um, idea to think about you know um, when you when you would be better to dry the clay and work with it dry and um, you know when you should wet it down and that's something that comes with practice um, as you manipulate the clay you realize what you can and can't do when it's wet or dry and manipulate the clay in that way. The other thing I'm thinking about too with the design is the fact that it does need to be worn on a finger and so I do try and keep the bodies while they are 3D I try and keep them somewhat flat and um, you know so think about that as well how wearable it will be. So now I'm coming in with the cat's tails and again I wet the clay down um, so that it adheres better. But not only that, I, I do then go in with my slip um, once it's in place and that really does help to um, hold it in place. Also just pressing that tail into the cat's body cat's body's already been dried so that bit of clay is dry um, and then yeah I'm just pressing that in so that it really adheres and I'll fix the shape up and um, make that a lot nicer once that's dried. Here's my slip And once it's dry, I really want to again flatten those tails out a bit. I don't want them sticking out too much and making the ring um, less wearable. So I am really trying to think about that to keep some definition in there, but also to make sure it um, is smooth and easy to wear. So the other sander made the tails quite flat so I am going in with that um, smaller sander, the little toothpick shape uh, one and um, smoothing and rounding out the tail a bit. And I actually have a dry brush next to me that I just use to brush away the um, dust and that makes it a bit easier. It's just a matter of continuing to work on it until you're really happy with the design. Um, I take quite a bit of time to really perfect the design because, I mean, once you fire it, that's it. You, you know, if you are a silversmith, there's things you can do to um, alter the ring. Um, but, you know, essentially you really want to do your um, design while the clay is still wet. So now I'm firing the clay and uh, you can see it's setting a light there and that's normal it's the binder that's in the clay uh, and so when you first start firing it you will have that burn off part it's on a fireproof brick as well and you want a well ventilated area um, and I've made sure my torch is completely full um, so that I don't run out of gas part way through and you can see the glowing ring there and um, I then quench it in some water and now you come in at it with a um, a wire brush and that gets into all the details because you'll find it it looks kind of white when you finished and that's very normal and um, to bring back the silver the brush really gets that done this is a burnisher 
so that's just got a very smooth face to it that you rub um, against the metal and it really polishes it up and gives it a really shiny finish so that's um, you don't have to do that you could just brush it if you really want a rough finish I also have these polishing cloths they have a very very fine fine grit to them they're used for polishing things like um, polymer clay and so forth and um, are just great for you know polishing things like this so now that the rings fired it is um, silver and um, completely hard and, and everything. Um, now I'm using liver of sulphur which is basically fart in a jar and um, it really smells but it does give it a lovely antiqued look so I'm just using a tiny tiny little bit with water you can see the colour there and the great thing about this is once I polish the outside off um, all of the little crevices and details will start to show up on the design even more so that's why I really wanted to antique this you could you can definitely just leave it silver though if you prefer um, you know plain silver and so this is the ring um, so yeah look you can see it is a little bit elongated there it's um, would have been better done in a kiln um, but it's an interesting design anyway and something I've never done before so um, hopefully you got something out of this video um, I am still learning with PMC so I you know I'm no master at this point but um, I thought I'd share with you anyway and hopefully it's inspired you to give PMC a try all right thanks craft nerds I hope you enjoyed it please subscribe if you like my tutorials and uh, we'll see you next time.